of the Latina Leadership Podcast, the podcast made for Latinas by Latinas, with Angelica Casares, Carolina Arenas, Diana Ruby, Jacqueline Villa Gomez, and Sonia Ramirez. Get comfortable, amiga, and enjoy the conversations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Latina Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm going to get to talk with Lupe Aguirre with Aguirre Construction. Lupe, welcome so much. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. How are you today? Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Did you have a nice long weekend? Yes, but it still wasn't long enough. <laughs> True, true. I feel that. I just got back from a vacation, so I'm also like oh, figuring really? things you go? back. Yesterday. I went to Puerto Rico. Oh, really? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, in July, I'm taking my whole family out to Destin, so we're really yes. excited about that. Yeah, this is our first vacation that we've had in a long, long. I think since they were kids. Now my kids are all grown oh up. So yeah, that's I have awesome. My baby and, so we're all flying, we're all flying out, all eight of us from Hobby Airport. So this should That's be interesting. So fun. Okay, <laughs> so I, I have a special request for you for you and your family, Lupe. So when I was in Puerto Rico, I saw four families on vacation and they were matching. And I thought it was the cutest thing ever. They had like la like one family had lavender tops and black bottoms. It was so cute. You know what? My my youngest was like, Mom, we should all get matching shirts. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get everybody there in one piece. But you know what? I am going to do that. I'm going to get, you know, take a picture with all of us matching. I think that'll be cool. Yes. <laughs> it's so cute. It was so cute. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm really excited to get into your story and hear more about you. I read uh, your bio and I'm very just kind of um, ready to hear from from you and and hear your story from your end. So um, I want to kind of jump in and talk about your entrepreneurship journey and kind of if you can tell me like when did you first think like when did the first um, kind of moment happen when you were like I want to be an entrepreneur and kind of like what was that journey like to make that leap. Well, you know, I was, I've been very blessed. I stayed home with my kids, you know, and raised all, you know, three of them. Um, my oldest is in the Air Force. Um, my son, he is a barber and, you know, he does, you know, work for me at times. And uh, my youngest is in nursing school. So I was blessed. So I actually really started working maybe like 15 years ago. And so happened, I got a job at a construction company and I was at the construction company. I was a receptionist, you know, secretary. And I just, you know, I, I always knew, like, I want to do something, but I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And, you know, um, so I was there and I was thinking, I was like, you know, maybe I should, I started saving. Um, I've um, saved, you know, to be able to provide, you know, for a company and, you know, my kids. And um, so I started thinking, okay, well, I'm going to open up some reception halls. Then I thought, no, maybe not. Well, I'm going to do this. And then one day I was like, what am I doing? I need to go into construction. That's what I know. So then that's when, you know, I started, you know, speaking to people. I, um, the company I work that I was working for, um, that's where I learned everything. I was flying around the United States. I was, you know, getting hands on, you know, meeting people. And finally, you know, at one point um, they were like, hey, why don't you go out on your own? And I was like, well, you know what? Not yet. Not yet. So it took me, you know, a little while to really be ready and be like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And so um, I've been in business. Let me see. Maybe like mm, five to six. Was it five months, six months, somewhere around there. And um, it's been very, very successful. I never thought in a million years that I would you know, um, grow so fast. And, you know, today I just found out I got another contract, you know, and it's just as big as the first one. So I've been very blessed, you know, and it was definitely a journey because, you know, when people would see me, they would be like, well, maybe, maybe not, you know, she's a woman. I'm the only GC and in the industry that I'm in with the, um, companies that I work for. So they were like, oh, you know, they didn't really believe in it, but, um, you know, it just, I just needed that one person to believe in me. 
and um, he did. And he, you know, I started, you know, going in little by little and it just grew really quick, really quick. So I've been very blessed. I've been very, very blessed. And, you know, I do maintenance at different daycares throughout the United States. Um, and when I mean maintenance, we do roofing, electrical, plumbing, um, everything you can think of. We do it. HVAC, mm -hmm. uh, just anything. That's awesome. And I, I did, I was very curious about that because construction is a very male dominated field. And so I'm curious, um, I know you said you started off at another company. So what made you kind of enter that field at the beginning? Um, and then if you could tell me a little bit more about what your experience has been like um, as a woman and how you've navigated those spaces. Well, the, the job kind of fell in my lap. You know, I wasn't looking, even though I come from a background, you know, like my dad's in construction, um, you know, a lot of my tios are in construction. Um, never did I think, oh, you know, I want to do construction. You know, it kind of just fell in my lap. You know, it was, I had my kids still in, you know, um, high school and grade school, you know. And so I was like, well, I need something close to home. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, I was put in that position. You know, I went in as a receptionist, secretary and um just climb the ladder and you know i was determined you know i wanted to learn everything you know now i can give you quotes on roofing plumbing you know anything you can think of i can give you a quote on it you know so i was determined and even though you know they would look at me and be like at, at first it was it was really hard it was really really hard because they didn't believe you know a hispanic woman could run a company you know, and I'm not educated, you know, I, I finished high school, but I didn't go to college. And, you know, I, I had kids, I chose that route to, you know, be a housewife and a mother, you know, to my kids. So I stayed home and took care of my kids. And, you know, when I remember there was one flight I had got off and um, I think I was in Chicago at that time. And I got off and the guy looked at me and he was like, wait, you're loopy? I'm loopy. And he like, just the look he gave me was like, business or no business? Cause I'll just jump right back on the plane. And he was like, no, 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 wait. But yeah, you know, there's been a lot of times, you know, or there's been a lot of people who don't want to work with me because I'm a woman um, and I'm Hispanic and it's sad. It's sad. So, and, and not only that, starting my own business coming from, you know, I didn't have not one penny to my name, but I saved and I saved and I knew that, you know, I was going to do it. it without a doubt. I was going to find something to do. I, like I said, I just didn't know what, and I was looking everywhere and I was like, hold on. I know construction. This is what I'm going to do. So when they offered, you know, the opportunity, I took it and I ran with it and I've been running with it. You know, um, it's not easy. <laughs> there's been a lot of tears at the beginning. I kept, you know, I couldn't make payroll. I was running out of money, but I kept praying. And um, I'm. there was times where I just wanted to throw my hands up in the air and be like, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, I, I can't. It's too much. But I'm glad I didn't. I stuck it out and I kept going and I kept striving and I kept, you know, because I didn't want my kids to see like, oh my gosh, my mom just gave up. No, I want them to always see me as a strong, I have two daughters, you know, strong, independent woman. You know, I've started this company by myself, um, you know, along with my, my assistant. My assistant's been with me throughout the way. I mean, and we've struggled. She's seen me cry, <laughs> um, you know, day in, day out. Like, you know, not, I didn't know what I was going to do. It was very difficult. But like I said, there's a will, there's a way. Those are my favorite, favorite, you know, that's my favorite phrase. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to figure it out. And I figured it out. And, you know, now I'm in, I'm in a good spot, you know, and I'm, I, I sit back and I'm like, gosh, I can't believe this. It's been mm. a true blessing, you know, and just to be able to take my kids on vacation. That's, that's amazing. You know, you know, and it's all of them, you know, hey, I'm taking everybody on a vacation. Don't worry about anything. Let's get on that plane. Let's go have a good time. And never in a million years that I think I'd be able to do this, do do this for my family. So I'm very, I'm very blessed in so many ways. And like I yeah. said, it's just that will and determination. 
So I know from from your story that um, you overcame serious like health challenges, especially at the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. Um, like, what made you kind of continue with your company at that time, or uh, how was how was that moment in time for you? Um, you know, it was in let me see, it's twenty two twenty one October twenty twenty one. I had went to the doctor, and they were like, "Hey, you have this brain aneurysm." And um, I was starting to lose vision, starting to lose my hearing. Um, and I was like, well, you know what? Let's let's get surgery. Let's have the surgery. And so um, February of 2022, I had the surgery and it was a it was something very unique. And, you know, all the doctors were very interested um, because the aneurysm was on the optic nerve. So that's why I was losing vision in my left eye. They couldn't clip it because I would have lost total vision and they couldn't um, cut it out because again, I would have lost total vision. It was on the optic nerve and the coronary artery. So what they did is they went in and put stents in. Um, the stents have been working, but then the blood flow was gushing. It's it's a whole big thing. Well, you know, um, so it formed like clots. So I'm still going through things, but you know what? I was like, you know what? It's still going to be there. I have to keep going. I have to keep going. You know, I, I have my family to provide for, you know, even though they're all older, um, my youngest is 20 and, you know, my oldest is 26 are going to be 26. Even though they're older, I still have to, you know, teach them like, don't give up, you know, and not until God calls, I'm going to keep on going. You know, there was a time where, you know, they did one of the surgeries. I had one in November of last year. And um, I couldn't walk and I couldn't speak either. So that was a very scary time of, you know, that I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? But, you know, I have my secretary, I would write down, you know, stuff in my notebook and she would, you know, call, you know, my subs and, you know, she's been a great big help. Um, just stick your head in here real quick. Just say hi. This is Haley. And she's been, that's Haley. Haley. <laughs> Hello. She's hey. been a big, big, big part of the journey, you know, not only, you know, my kids, they've been there for me and, you know, it's been, it's been definitely a, a challenging journey, but everyone mm. always says, Hey, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to, how do I, I wanted to leave a legacy for my kids, you know, Hey, my yes. mom did this, always give them, you know, like, well, if my mom can do it, you know, I can do it. This is what we were taught to do. So that's why, you know, I continue to strive for success, you know, yeah. because of my kids. They're my, they're, they're, they're my purpose. They're my reason. Mm. Tell me a little bit more about um, your support system. Cause so, I mean, entrepreneurship can, can be a very solo, lonely journey. Um, and so tell me a little bit about like what the support has looked like for you and, and kind of what difference that has made for you, for you and for your business. Well, this was pretty much, you know, besides my kids, it was pretty much a solo ride. Like, you know, I mm -hmm. did everything on my own. I didn't, you know, didn't have a partner. It was just, it, and it, it was so crazy at one point that I don't think anybody would have ever stuck around with it being as crazy as it was at one time, you know? So um, I would have to say it would be my kids. Not only were they my support system, but they were also my motivation. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so what, what would you say to Latinas or what advice would you give to Latinas who may feel limited by either a health condition or other obstacles, but have the dream of being business owners or an entrepreneurs? Don't ever give up. I was, my story could go on forever and ever. You know, I was that mother raising three kids by myself. You know, there was times where we were limited, you know, even to what we ate. You know, we lived in a two bedroom apartment and we didn't have, they didn't have everything. All I could provide was a roof over their head and food on the table. Not, no more, nothing extra. Um, but don't give up, you know, like if there's a will, there's a way. And there's so many ways out there to, 
to make money. You just got to be creative and use your mind, you know, and it could be just like me. It was sitting right on my lap. And I didn't think like, hey, I was too busy thinking about, OK, I can do this. I can do that. But it can be as sitting right on your lap. You just got to really sit there and think about it. And being a single mother, you don't have a lot of time to think, you know, or you don't have a lot of resources because every every penny that's coming in, you're using it toward a bill or to feed the kids or to dress the kids, you know, but I kept, I kept going, you know, I kept, um, I kept trying to find ways. And thankfully I, I was able to, at my job that I was at, I started as a receptionist and I learned, use the resources that you have wherever you're at. There's always going to be some kind of resources and you take advantage of it. And I learned and I learned and, you know, I started, you know, just traveling everywhere and I started meeting people. People would be like, gosh, you work seven days a week. You're always out of town. But I knew what I was doing. I was out there, you know, networking. I was getting my name out there. So if there's a will, there's a way. Just don't give up. You know, there's so many resources out there. Even like right now, I take advantage of everything. If they send me an invite to a seminar, you know what? I'm going to go to that seminar. Any little thing that there is, I'm going to do it because you know what? And I tell, like I tell the girls, it's networking. And a lot of the time it's not even what you know, it's who you know, you know? Um, and I'm... I, I have been so blessed. Like I am so blessed and sitting here and I'm really thinking about it. Like I had zero dollars in my bank account, you know, and where I'm at now, it's amazing. And it was all because I didn't give up and you don't stop pedaling. You like you keep striving um, and, and you'll get there. There's, there's, there's always a way. There's always a way. Even like at the beginning of my company, you know, I was, Oh my gosh, how am I going to make payroll this, this, this week? You know, everyone needs to get paid, but I would find a way, you know, so there's, there's, there's always a way to do everything. And sometimes you got to work at it a little harder, but you're going to get where you need to be. And I would always say, don't give up, don't give up, keep striving, keep trying. For sure. I've heard you say a few times now that like, the business was was right there was right there in front of you and it took like a moment of like realization what what did that look like because i i feel like i know a lot of people that are like i would love you know to own my own business and be an entrepreneur um but they just don't know with what so how did that happen for you and and just kind of like what was that realization like well i was saving i was saving i didn't know what kind of company i wanted to open i just knew that i was going to do something i was mm. tired of working for someone you know i wanted to be able to set my own prices set my own guidelines you know have my own employees you know i knew i wanted to do something and have and like i said i was looking every direction you know, what can I do? What can I do? You know, from food trucks to halls to game rooms to, um, you know, so many things. And when I stopped and thought, I was like, do what you know. Don't, you know, go out and try to jump into something you don't know. Um, and mostly because if I would have made a wrong move, I would have went bankrupt. Like, <laughs> lost out on everything but everything's a risk i understand that but i wanted it to be a more as a, a a secure risk does that even make sense like mm -hmm. i wanted to make sure it was something <laughs> i knew so and you know i had just like the way i had people like well she's a woman she's a latina woman you know mm -hmm. she, you can she's not educated you know she doesn't have all the degrees and stuff i had people also supporting me you know, I had, I've had, you know, like the people that I work for. And now I had someone tell me, you're like a possum. You have so many people on your back, you know, depending on you. And that does scare me at times. It does scare me as soon as, you know, I get a headache and I'm like, uh oh, you know, or I'm not feeling good that, uh oh, uh oh, you know, and it does scare me. But all of that just motivates me to keep going, to keep going, you know, even though it may just be me, you know, keep, I, I know that I have to keep going for, 
and I do have a lot of people depending on me. You know, there's a lot of people that need work, you know, and when they call me, hey, can you please get me some work? And, you know, they're on my mind and I'm thinking, man, I need to get these people some work because they have a family to support as well. And thankfully, I'm able to provide that, you know, for my subs and, you know, my family. Mm -hmm. I heard you also say um, something about risk, which I think is really interesting because um, as women, as Latinas, like we're told not to take risks, right? We're told to stay in one lane or um, follow a very specific path. Um, so what was there anything in your life that um, made you more kind of like open to taking a risk, like starting a business? Like what, what are your thoughts around that? I'm telling you, my main motivation was my kids or is mm. my kids. You know, I want to be able to leave them something. I'm all they have. I've raised them alone by myself. I wanted, I wanted to be able to leave them something. You know, I want them to be able to, you know, I know my oldest daughter, she's an aerospace physiologist for the United States Air Force. And my youngest, she's, oh, wow. you know, <laughs> in school right now. Amazing. And um I'm hoping one day, you know, that one of them say, hey, mom, you know, which I do have my youngest working for me right now. She is mm -hmm. um, one of my secretaries. Um, she just started working maybe like a month ago. Um, and then I have my son and, you know, he's he's a barber. And I'm hoping on their time that they're like, hey, mom, you know what? We want to take over the company, you know, mm -hmm. and let them run the company. Um but that's my that's my hope and hopes and wishes is for one of my kids to be like, hey, let me take over the company so mommy can relax. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. And you know, um, I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and have just interacted with many of them, and I know it's really not an easy path to take. I feel like recently and like in COVID times, like there was this kind of. Um, trend uptrend of entrepreneurship which is really great because i do believe like entrepreneurship is um like a really important path um but i know it's not easy right it's not easy to be uh the the person uh so what it's, does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur well for me it's um well for me i'd have to say that um It's definitely making it, if I'm understanding the question right, it was definitely for me, it was to have, make a better life for my kids, you know, um, it's nothing that's worth something. It's going to come easy, but I'm thankful that I was given the strength to overcome the brain surgeries and, you know, to push through the beginning of starting my company. Um, I want to be able to leave something to my kids, knowing the position I'm in. Um, I want them to always show, I want to show them and others that anything is possible. And, you know, mostly, you know, I sit back and I look at, you know, all these young girls and, you know, I'm always like, hey, don't give up. You know, I've come where you come from, you know, like I know what it is to be a single mother and be limited. And I just, I want everybody to see that anything is possible. And being a minority woman, it's been definitely uh, a challenge, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It's definitely made me. It's definitely made me. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, can you tell me something about like how you lead your company and like your staff? Um, that might be different from how like you've experienced being working at other construction companies. Like, what, is there something that you're very intentional about when you lead your staff? Well, my staff is my daughter and my daughter-in-law. And I'm very grateful to her. Haley is my daughter-in-law. And um, 
I want to um, keep it like a family, you know, not necessarily, you know, one of my kids or cousins or whoever, you know, I want to keep it women. I really do. Just women, you know, yeah. in the office because um, you don't see this often, you know, and to be able to do this, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, I get to choose who I want in my office, you know, and we're, we're, we're family, you know, just like today we got to, we want to go get our nails done, you know, and sometimes I'm like, Hey, everybody get ready. We're going fishing or we're going shopping or, you know, and that's what I want to continue it, you know, being as it doesn't, I mean, we do what we have to do and we work hard when we're here in the office, but at the same time, we have to really enjoy life. We really have to enjoy life, you know, and I thought about that when I was in ICU. They gave me a um, 30% chance to live when I was in ICU. And wow. um, when I had the brain, the first brain surgery. And mm -hmm. I was like, whatever. So anyways, my daughter was at Texas Women's. And as she came home because she was like, I'm going to go home to take care of you. They were like, oh, she's going to need all this help. I was in ICU for one day. And I was like, give me my laptop. I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> And by the next wow. day, I was I was out, you know, I was out of ICU. As a matter of fact, I got out the hospital. And yeah, every time wow. they would do surgery, I would tell them at work, hey, I got to go in for brain surgery. All right, Lupi, well, how long are you going to be out? Yeah, I'm going to try to make it back within two weeks. <laughs> I would always make it back within two weeks. But I'm just, yeah. you know, that's just like, I love what I do. I love yeah. construction. You know, it's just, it's it's something that I love. And I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Uh, um, you know, and like I said, it's just, you have to love what you do. And I do it for the kids, you know, for my kids, for other women that are going through the same thing I did. It hasn't always been so beautiful last year, you know, was I had, I was driving a 2003 Tahoe and last year I was able to buy me a new car. You know, uh, I had been living in apartments forever. And last year I was able to buy me a new house, you know, so it's been very rewarding and that, you know, seeing things like that, it's like, oh, I can do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I just, and I, I want to be able to help other women, you know, that have gone through the same thing. Um, with the challenges of raising kids by yourself it and i'm i'm going to tell you that's that was my straight motivation is to provide a better life for my kids absolutely mm -hmm. so um now that we've kind of been talking um tell me do you consider yourself a leader why or why not i most definitely do and the reason being is i love to help people out and, you know, many people might think that that's like my weak point, but I love telling my story like, hey, you can do it. It's possible. If I can do it, anybody can do it because I was like at rock bottom raising these kids, you know? I didn't, when I first started thinking, I knew before I even had any money to start my company, I knew that I wanted to do something, you know, and little by little, I just started saving, putting money to the side, saving a little bit, saving a little bit until finally I was at that point where, hey, let's get this done. You know, um, I'm definitely to open to sharing with people like how I started. What do you have to do? You know, there was a lot of times where I would ask people like, hey, what kind of insurance do I need? Where do I get this from? Where do I? And there's there's people who don't want to help, you know, but. I would help anyone and everyone just to help them get started. It's beautiful. Like, how could you not want to help anyone? Um, I would take anyone under my wing just to, you know, guide them, show them what you want to do after that. That's all up to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm big on, hey, Haley, learn everything you can for me. Soak it up. Because you, and even when we go to these seminars, you go around and you meet anyone and everyone that you can meet. It's networking. You might, something could happen to me. You want to be able to have 
people that you can call, hey, are you hiring? Hey, do you need this? Do you need that? And not everybody you're going to run into is going to be so welcoming and, you know, willing to welcoming and willing to help. But there's going to be so many people that you know, that so many people that you've met, and, you know, everything I teach you, learn it, soak it up, take it in. You know, who knows? You might be even running a Gary construction. I don't know, you know, but right now I'm just soaking it all in, loving life. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. I've almost lost mine several times. So um, I would really, I really want to spread this because I was that young girl raising babies by myself. And here I am, I have my own company and it's it's a it's been a very successful company and you know i've had brain surgery and yeah you know sometimes my vision goes out my speech i i uh stutter or i slur my words or you know some days i'm not feeling well but it can be done it can be done and whatever time i have left here on this earth i'll continue reaching out to people that i could possibly help with even if it's just motivation you know if they need me to guide them on how to begin their own business, that's something I'm willing to do. Mm. So for any of um, anybody listening that is interested in starting their own business, um, what are maybe like the top three things that you would tell them they need to know um, as they're starting this journey? For one, good credit. Never in a million years that I think that credit would become into play. But during that time when I was having a, um, a hard time meeting like my um, weekly um, payroll, mm -hmm. good credit would have came you know, in hand for that. That would have been great. I didn't. Um, a good support system because there's going to be a lot of times where things are going to get real heavy on your shoulders and you're going to want to quit. But quitting is not even an option. But there's going to be times. And it's always nice to have that someone, hey, you're a fighter. You can keep doing this. Everything's going to work out. You know, it's a good support support system. Um, another thing is I would have to say um, always remain positive. Always remain positive. You got to take the good. You got to take the bad with the good. And vice versa, because <laughs> that's just it, it is, you know, when you think about opening your own business, all right, you know, everything's going to be great. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. You got to remain positive through that. You got to keep striving. No giving up here. You know, it's like I said, it's not an option to give up. And then when you're so far in, you're like, ah. yeah, I, mm. I've, been, I've been it's been a true blessing. It's been a true blessing. I love that. And uh, are there any like final thoughts or um, think other things that you wanted to make sure uh, we talked about today or that you shared with our listeners? Um, my main thing is to remain positive. Um, just don't give up. Don't give up. Like I've said multiple times, if there's a will, there's a way. You're going to find a way. If you really, really want it, you're going to find a way. You're mm. going to find a way to make it happen. I mean, it and it doesn't come easy. It does. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It did not come easy. It, mm. You know, even to the point of saving money to start the business, you know, it that was, you know, on its own, you know, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that because I wanted to put that extra money to the side. I wanted to put it to the side. But hey, um, I did it. So it is possible because I'm I'm the one that likes to go out and buy all the perfumes and sunglasses and you know <laughs> shoes like that. Um, and Helen's opening up. She's um, Helen's in the background. She's like, it's okay to fail. No, failure's not an option. It's not an <laughs> option ever. <laughs> she's over there laughing. I don't think I read the whole thing. <laughs> You want to come say hi, Helen? Come reach in. Say hi. She's like, 
I love, I also, I love that you're like bringing folks along. Like, I think that's one of the most powerful things that we can do as women and as Latinas is continue bringing, bringing other women along. So I really love that. Oh, yes, You've been for doing sure, that. For sure. For sure. And, you know, um, I just got another big contract and I was telling Haley, I was like, hey, we're going to have to do some more hiring. And um, you know what? This has all been taking place on my dining room table. Yeah. Make, you know, <laughs> running this company, um, it's been taking place on the dining room table. And finally, mm. we moved into the game room. And I'm like, yeah, we're kind of <laughs> outgrowing this too. So um, mm -hmm. I've been looking for, you know, a shop now that we're going to move into. And um, I got, you know, like I said, I got that second contract today and I'm really excited about that. And um, I'm planning on opening up a liquidation center as well. And um, so everything's coming together. It's, That's it's very all, exciting. It's all Together. And I'm excited what the future holds for Aguirre Construction and um, the liquidation center that we'll be opening soon, soon as well. Um, I do definitely want to get some more of my young um, Latina women in here and teach them the trade. Um, it's it's exciting. I love it. And it's kind of, you know, they hear Lupe and they're like thinking, oh, they're going to see some man. Nope, it's me with the lipstick and the hair done and the makeup on. Yes. <laughs> it's me. Hello. <laughs> and then, you know, both of my, you know, girls and Haley, um, she's, she's remarkable. She's, I, I, you know, even when we were at the other company, because she was with me at the other company as well. And I always said, Haley's another me. She's a go-getter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a go-getter, and she's definitely stood, stood by my side, even times when I was like, whoa, you know, and she'd just sit quiet and look at me like, everything's going to be okay. I need a hug, and she'd be right there ready to give me a hug. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. Where can uh, people find you, Lupe, online, on socials? Where can folks find you? If anyone, you know, is interested in, you know, more, they can definitely reach out to me. Um on you know my facebook and it's under lupe aguirre um i would sure love to i'm sorry email. or email um it's aguirre construction at yahoo.com and awesome. um i definitely you know i would love to help anyone that's you know interested in moving forward even if it's just motivation or hey get your butt up and let's get going <laughs> you yeah. know, and, or, you know, any of my contacts, if they can help anyone, you know, as far as, you know, general liability, you know, and all that fun stuff and getting all that in, in line to, you know, start their own business. Um, I definitely can provide that as well. So I'm here to help. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Lupe. Uh, it really was a pleasure to hear your story straight from you. Um, I was really excited to do, have this conversation with you and to be able to learn more about Aguirre Construction. So thank you so much. And um, that was Lupe Aguirre with Aguirre Construction. You can wait. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks. What did you think of the conversation? If you enjoyed what you heard, let us know in the comments. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you for listening to the Latina Leadership Podcast and we will see you next time.